A few years ago, in one of our videos, my delirious brain came up with the term flappy snack hazard, and it's become a bit of a running joke ever since. So while setting up your equipment, you should always be as streamlined as possible, which will help you to move through the water easier, but also keep you and your equipment from getting snagged on anything. Anything that does dangle off you, I classify as a flappy snag hazard. So Webster's Dictionary defines flappy snag hazard as a loose dangly object or objects hanging off a scuba diver that constitutes as a point that can become caught or entangled in the water. Obviously it's not in Webster's Dictionary but I just thought that would be fun. Uh, so basically anything that hangs off you can just sort of bang against the reef or get sort of caught up in anything, that can be a flappy snag hazard. Apart from running out of air or leaving your tank stood upright on the boat, getting caught on something underwater is one of the worst things that can actually happen to a scuba diver. To take this to kind of a more serious tone, if you do become entangled in something underwater and you can't free yourself and your buddy doesn't notice, then you are actually in some serious trouble. Even if you don't get snagged on something, your dangly bits can smash and destroy delicate wildlife, or, you know, your dangly bit can be destroyed. So, sorry, Sean. So, <laughs> so keep them trim, keep them nice and close to your body so that you're not actually destroying things. So let's take a close look at scuba divers dangly bits and the worst hashtag flappy snag hazards when scuba diving. Your alternate air source, your octo, your octopus, or whatever you call it, is a tricky kind of contradiction. You want something that sticks to your hip so you know exactly where it is, but you also want it to be quick release so that in an emergency it can be deployed quickly and easily. So these quick release mechanisms combined with the trauma of a giant stride entry or a rollback entry can actually detach your octo so it just drifts off to do its octo thing up to around 90 centimeters to a meter away from you dragging all along the bottom and all over that delicate fan coral with a big wrecking ball of a second stage at the end of it that can get caught and snagged in things. This is one thing that you can't really cut yourself free. Ideally, if you do get uh, sort of something well and truly snagged in a wreck or just in anything and you can't get free, then you just want to cut it free. But cutting your octo hose is a bad idea and I probably didn't need to tell you that. But still, a flappy octo is probably one of the most common flappy snag hazards that you'll see in the water because it can be quite tricky to get them back into their quick release mechanism by yourself if they ever do sort of fall out of place. And most divers won't actually notice that their octo isn't where it should be. In a perfect world, we'd all be diving primary donate setups. And yes, this is gonna be a bit DIR preachy, but if you have your alternate around your neck, you notice when it's not there. And because you donate your primary that you're breathing from, in an incident, your donating second stage is in your mouth. It's not dangling around behind your hip. Your gauges are also another dangler that you often see waving off the side of divers. Similar to your octo, you want your gauges stuck to your hip, but releasable so that you can actually read them when you need to. Most divers will just invest in a cheap plastic clip that kind of grips onto the hose, but these are of course generic and they can just wear out over time. Plastic clips are okay in an emergency if you have nothing else to clip your gauges off to, but they're not really any good, um, they're not a good mounting point for your gauges really. You want something strong and secure so that your gauges that are telling you how much gas you have left, how deep you are and which direction you're facing, so that you're not dangling and smashing them against a rock. You just dropped a lot of money investing in those gauges and you're using like a dollar's worth of plastic to keep it from dragging along the floor. I'd invest in something a bit fancier. Try to use a proper bolt snap with a large eye on it so that you can clip it off to a D-ring. That way it's always close to your body, it's exactly where you expect it to be and you can unclip it quickly and easily to read your gauges. It's another one of those that you don't really want to cut it free if it gets snagged. Cutting through a high pressure hose is not a good idea. Um, but I am seeing a lot of uh, sort of recreational divers. They're also clipping their gauges to their right D-ring on their shoulder. Um, this adds another thing that you have to unclip when you're getting out of your gear, but it does mean that your gauges and its hose are really nice and close to your body and you can read your gauges without actually unclipping. So I'm kind of on board with it. 
Scuba diving social media would be pretty boring without underwater pictures and videos, but too many cameras just dangle off scuba divers like Christmas decorations. A bit like your gauges and your octo, you only really want to get your camera out when you actually need it uh, before clipping it back. But cameras live in that kind of special bubble where you really want it attached to you in some way at all points of the dive, because if you drop it, it's gone. And so because you want your camera attached to you but free to move about so you can take a picture, you probably have some kind of springy coil lanyard or a retractor. So these can keep your camera kind of close to your body, but they still leave them dangling a good foot or so from your chest, again just smashing into things and breaking stuff. If you're using your camera all of the time, then just keep it in your hand with a wrist lanyard so that you can drop it if you need to use your hand. If you're only taking the occasional photo then just store it in a pocket and use a, a, a small bolt snap just attached to the camera itself so it doesn't dangle too far away from you. Hoses are essential to scuba divers to, you know, breathe, but they can be the literal definition of a flappy snag hazard. It's like having loops of rope attached all over yourself. A long thin line that loops around you and floats around that can get caught on things is a flappy snag hazard. If you get your primary hose caught on something, the motion of you swimming will probably just yank the mouthpiece out of your mouth. So a long hose with a lot of slack poorly routed is just begging to get caught on something. Most regulator hoses are about 75 to 90 centimeters long, but I regularly dive with one that is more than twice the length of either of those. I just have mine rooted properly so it never flaps around everywhere. Traditional rubber hoses are quite well behaved compared to their braided counterparts and they tend to stay where they're left. If you're looking at longer hoses then, Basically braided ones are much lighter and they kind of sound appealing, but they're also much more buoyant so they do tend to float off. Try to change the way that your hoses are routed to where they need to be and don't get too much excess. If you're trying to decide between a hose that is just the right length and one that's got an extra two inches on it because it gives you a little extra slack, consider that kind of looping handle that that extra two inches is gonna produce that can get caught in a wreck above you. Keep hoses neat and running down the length of your body and try to keep any slack kind of tucked away so it can't get snagged on anything. Now, I know, I know, this section covers quite technical terms, but bear with me. So, bits on things are all potential flappy snag hazards. Now, I'm talking about loops of materials on suits that are just kind of there for cosmetic purposes, uh, just excessive D-rings on BCDs, and just extra strappy bits that don't really need to be there. You can often find extra loops on BCDs and lines of bungee that keep the BCD all sort of tied up nice and neat, but these are all extra things that can actually get caught on stuff. Yes, I know that this is getting quite pernickety, but if you've ever got your belt loop snagged on a door handle, then you'll understand just how easy it can be for something that close to your body to get snagged on something. Or maybe I just walk too close to doors, I don't know. I mean, I once knew a diver that had to pretty much write off their entire BCD because a D-ring got caught on the handrail of a boat as they were getting out, and it just ripped the whole thing off. Not the handrail, just the D-ring, it just ripped that off and they couldn't repair it, so they just replaced the entire BCD. I mean, I've known divers cut off the little thumb loop on their fin strap because it could get caught on something. Whilst this is probably a little extreme, it is worth looking at your gear and thinking about what could get snagged on something in the water. Some bits just seem to have extra D-rings for the sake of it though. I mean, I've seen D-rings on weight belts, why would you clip something off to your weight belt? You might need to drop that in an emergency. That seems like the worst place I'd put a D ring. You should attach your octo to it. Oh no! Ditch that and it drags you down with you. Yeah. So what's the worst flappy snack hazard you've ever seen? Uh, if you look hard enough, you can see plenty of them in the water, trust me. Uh, don't point at me, Sean. Um, so how do you clip off your octo and your gauges? Uh, do you use proper stainless steel bolt snaps or do you still use plastic clips? Uh, let's talk about flappy snack hazards in the comments below. Thank you for watching and of course, safe diving. You're a massive flappy snack hazard, Mark. Just the embodiment. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear, this is the tone of the video. You tell me not to read it, so this is going to be interesting. <laughs>
<laughs> Send in your photos. No! No! <laughs> you dangling me! No! I don't want to see anyone's fucking snow houses. And without equalising them properly. So most divers don't have a problem with equalizing once they've got the hang of the technique, but not everybody is the same and some people struggle. And even if you don't have a problem with equalizing, you can always improve your technique. So let's take a closer look at how to stop your ears from ruining your dive. 